So the biggest moment in my career, it was the strongest experience. It's up to pair. I mean, my wife is probably gonna kill me, but up to pair getting my, 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 some of my children. My name is Emil Christensen. I was born on June 14, 1984. I grew up in a lot of places growing up, actually. I had quite a, how can you say, hard, uh, hard childhood, I must say. I grew up in an area called Schertorp, which is, which is south of Stockholm. Moved to Huddinge when I was 12 or 13. Uh, and I was, I think I was kind of a normal child on the outside, but I had, we, we had a lot of troubles at home. I had, my mother had um, pills abuse. I think I was four years old when my mother started starting to do that. She worked as a nurse and broke her back, uh, got uh, medicated painkillers back in the days. And yeah, you, we all know how addictive those can be. So it, that started the whole spiral that, that, that went on until she passed away. Uh, and it was kind of messy because I never met my biological father. So I had the, the guy I called father, uh, dad came in when I was six. Uh, I don't want my, my own child that I have right now to grow up the way I did. And that's like the biggest driving force I have in life at the moment. But, but also I think it shaped me to become the person I became because I always know that I was different, not always in a positive way. But I, I don't think I would have succeeded with my career as much as I did if I didn't have the, the weird, weird uh, childhood that I had. So I started playing sports really early. Uh, uh, I think I was six years old when I started uh, playing ice hockey. Uh, it was uh, Anders, the guy I called that. Uh, he was a big, big hockey fan. So he, he wanted me to start playing hockey and I, I thought, yeah, that looks awesome. So I started painting my walls with, uh, you know, posters of hockey players and it was the only thing I thought about from waking up in the morning to going to sleep. It was ice hockey all the time from I was six years old. And that was horrible when I started. I, I, I became a goalkeeper. And the reason I became that was because I was so bad at ice skating, literally. So they were like, okay, you gotta be the goalkeeper. Uh, and I was horrible. And I, I, I had one of my strongest memories, my, my dad has uh, told me about it, is when I'm skating around it, I, I could only skate with one feet at the time. So I had one straight ahead and the other one. And I went, went to him and said, dad, look how good I am. And he's like, he's crying on the inside. And, and yeah, but, uh, Eventually, yeah, I started skating as well, and I became quite quite good at ice hockey. With, with the background I had and the home situation, I needed something else to put all my focus on, so I could escape the reality, if that makes sense. So I, I became, how can I say, 100% ice hockey. That was my life from six years old until I, I hurt myself later and went into esports. I hurt my foot, so I, uh, I yeah, I broke it pretty much, and uh, couldn't walk for a whole summer. Sat at home. Uh, had nothing to do in my, my life. I mean, that, this life had been evolving or revolving around uh, ice hockey for 10, 11, uh, 12 years. Uh, so my life was like, okay, what am I gonna do now? Can I be able to skate again? Uh, and uh, my friend told me, hey, you should play this computer game. I was like, okay, I'll play it. And I was horrible, like literally, probably the worst gamer ever is that sat down in front of a computer. So I started playing a lot because I had nothing else to do during the summer. And yeah, I was still horrible. Uh, for a very long time but after a while I mean I started to get a hold of it and yeah eventually I beat my friends and felt hey, I'm pretty good at this uh, and this was early early stages eSport wasn't even a thing then the, the things we see now with the stadiums and everything but I felt hey, I'm pretty good at this I'm pretty good so we started competing online with uh, you just take a team there was nothing serious and I felt hmm, I'm pretty good at this as well I was the best one on all the servers I went into I felt okay this is this is kind of good uh, in the same, same time when uh, esports started growing or how can you say the, the first initial tournaments of esports they were very small ones they had maybe 25,000 Swedish crowns or 50 if there was a big one uh, and people started competing I felt like this is what I want to do in the future and eventually I met a guy called Tommy Potty. So he took me under his wings and we started competing together. I went to my first tournament ever in uh, Holland. So we went by car down to Utrecht uh, and we won this tournament. Uh, and it was 
was awesome. I played really well as well. Uh, I was probably the best one in the tournament and it, that felt kind of amazing because I never tried my skills on LAN versus other top players before and to still be the best there, it felt really good. Uh, and in the same period, I, I, my foot was good again, so I could probably start with ice hockey. And I remember my dad told me, you have to go back to ice hockey training. And I was like, I don't want to, because I felt like I had a new purpose in life, something that my whole, how can I say, my whole world revolved around esports after that, just like it did with hockey before, but now it was only Counter-Strike. That was the only thing that was in my head. And looking back at it, I think the reason I'm like that in my head and go all in. There's only one thing I can focus on is because I wanted to escape reality with the mess I had at home growing up. And the new purpose I had in life was to become good at Counter-Strike. And so I decided to quit ice hockey. Yeah, my parents didn't like that at all. My dad wanted me to play ice hockey. My mom wanted me to study and quit in esports. You see the big tournaments today that has millions and millions in prize pools for superstars. Nothing of that existed uh, and it was nothing out there, no future, no anything. So I understand their concerns. It was to the same level. They, they, they hide away the, the modem at home when they were away, but I went and bought a new one that I connected when they were not at home. So <laughs> they didn't know I played. No, that was the only way because I felt like this is what I want to do. And yeah, I started playing a lot. I got signed by a team, got 50 euros a month to play and free mouse pads. And I was the king of the world. So, so going into, I mean, Playing esports in front of a computer, you don't need a good physique theoretically because you're sitting down in front of a computer. But when I started out playing, I was in good shape from ice hockey. Uh, quit training, just sat in front of a computer, ate a lot of junk food, grew, I think, maybe 40, maybe 50 kilos, and I started losing focus. I started losing focus a lot. I could only sit for like an hour or two, then I had to lay down. I lost my. I, I was getting worse at the game, even though I practiced harder than ever, really. And I talked to my dad and he said, yes, of course, you're, you're, not, you're not exercising and you're, you're getting overweight. Of course, you're not going to be able to focus because you need to, be, to put oxygen in, in, your, in your brain to be able to focus, especially for many hours and get that straight. So I felt like that makes sense. I'm going to start working out and eat a little bit more healthier. It doesn't kill you to eat a pizza here and there and I mean, to have some fun. But in general, I mean, exercise helps a lot. And I started exercising and I became the best ever in my career. My favorite exercise is biceps curls, obviously, because for when you play CS, you need, need big guns. No, I'm just kidding, obviously, because I, I, I have to say, I'm a bit of a disco gymmer myself. I mean, I, I like the big arms. That's my favorite thing. Uh, I, I think that's my, my favorite because I'm, I'm pretty good at it, I have to say. So, I think I drink quite a few narcos every day. My favorite one is uh, Skum Tomte, uh, tightly followed by Blood Orange. Uh, so I start my day with a narco, not coffee or anything. I, I need my narco. Uh, then the nights when I play, it tends to go, go a few more of them. Well, if I'm not playing, I drink one more in the afternoon. But if I play, they can go down quite a few during a gaming night because it, it helped me stay focused and be alert when, when I play. So it's, uh, it's helping me a lot. So my nickname, Hidden, it's uh, actually an old ice hockey brand. They, uh, they made uh, goalie equipment. I was a goalie and I had everything Hidden. That was my favorite brand. Nothing else was like, I could never use anything else. Then I would be like, yeah, this is not, not gonna work. Even though we pro probably better gear, Hidden was the only stuff for me that I could ever have. And uh, going into CS, it was kind of natural. Okay, Hidden, that's my, because ice hockey was my life. First, I'm gonna come up with, with a nickname. Okay, Hidden. That, because that was my gear. Well, actually, look, then I put this big N in the end, and I, this actually became, how can you say, the standard for the industry after <laughs> that you have a big uh, big H, and then in the end, you have a big letter as well. So everybody copied it. It was, I don't know why I did it. I was probably young and immature because it's it's kind of tacky now, looking back at it when I'm, when I'm older, but ah, it worked, it worked. So that's the story of my nickname. So the first team I started with was called Nostradamus. And this, this was on very amateur level online. Uh, and then I got picked up to Ninjas in Pyjamas by Party. That was the first, how can you say, serious team. The other one was, we were just a bunch of friends playing online in the first one. So I would have to say my first team was Ninjas in Pyjamas. I won pretty much everything that you can win in CS. And 
I think I won the World Cup eight times. There were two per year. I think we won them all in a row, or except one maybe. So long time ago, but uh, pretty much everything that you could win. We were undisputed the best in the world for, for a very long time. So the biggest moment in my career, or actually there, there's two. There's one as a professional player, that was uh, 2003 in uh, Seoul, in South Korea, when we won the WCG. Uh, it was the first time we played with people on stage, on the stadium, and we had a very, very tight final versus the best American team. We were top two teams in the world, and we managed to make a magical comeback, first time on stage. I mean, I get goosebumps talking from it right now. Uh, but I, I have to say, the one moment I rank higher is not when I played. It was uh, when I was the, the manager for Ninjas in Pyjamas. We played in uh, Dreamac Malmö Stadium. I think this was three years ago, maybe. Uh, it was the first time we had a big Counter-Strike tournament in Sweden in a stadium. It was sold out. Everybody's chanting NIP. Okay, here's Counter Goose Cup bumps again. And we, we, we had a rough path going into that. There were a few tournaments we didn't win. We had some bad results. And we went in, we won in home, home soil versus Navi in the finals. I mean, it, it was the strongest experience I've ever had as, I mean, it's up to pair. I mean, my wife is probably gonna kill me, but up to pair <laughs> getting my, 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 some of my children. Uh, I mean, it was the same kind of wow experience because I mean, I just remember I fell down on the floor and had no words because it was so much going into it, you know. Growing up, seeing this uh, sport has become now to from 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 the things I started with, with, with it was very small, with pretty much no future in it. To filling up Malmo Stadium, with filled with people, and your team is winning on home soil. Everybody, like 12, 13,000 people, are screaming your team's name that you you created. I mean, it's yeah, oh, well. it's it's an amazing experience. I think the the tip I would give people trying to break through in a career is. I mean, consistency. You, you need to be able to go for a very long time without being noticed, doing the same stuff. The boring stuff is the most important one. Uh, the, the one thing I think helped me a lot was taking notes. Every night when I played, I took note, notes in front of the computer on, uh, on a paper. Then I looked at it. Next morning I woke up, what I'm gonna focus on, what I did good, what I'm gonna do, what I did bad, what I need to focus on. Then I tried to apply it during the next game day when I play. And just developing like that, having a plan with what you're doing, because if you just sit down and play with no purpose, no goal, I mean, it's going to take you 10 times as long time to, to develop as somebody who has goals, who has a structure, who you want to do it. So just doing it, even though it's boring to do the stuff you're maybe not so good at, that's where, I mean, that's where the difference comes in. And if you look at top level players at the moment, there's not much really. Uh, separating them from the, the how can you say, the semi-elite, the people just beneath them if, when it comes to aim. But they have, have the whole package. They have the aim, they have the game sense, they have the consistency. That's because they have a structure, they have very good routines in what they're doing. And I, I think that that's key. It might not be the answer people want to hear, but it's the correct one. When I got inducted as the first person ever to the Hall of Fame in esports, it's 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 one of the biggest moments in in, in my life, and I get a bit uh, tears now. It's like the first time, the first thing I thought was I wanted my mom to see this because she was, even though we, we, she had a rough path, she was always trying to support me. She was she was the best thing ever in my life growing up, and I wouldn't have made it without her. And also, you know, getting a stamp that. I mean, the first one ever to get inducted to the Hall of Fame. There's been so many games, so many gamers out there since I played. It's, it's the biggest honor I could ever have. And so much emotions going through, through your head. It's, I, I prepared a very long speech. I couldn't get a single word out. I was like, T -t thank you. That, that was pretty much what came out. And I had this speech, I wanted to thank so many people. I couldn't do it because it was emotionally overloading. Really, because it's so, so many, how can you say, blood, sweat, and tears, and I mean, so many memories growing up with people, everything from family to uh, teammates doing good things for you, for people doing bad things to you, going through your head. That's it all came down to that moment. So it's, yeah, it was, it was an emotional roller coaster. <laughs>